I don't see myself ever going back. Like, I don't like those habits that I was, you know, I wasn't before. I like to feel, you know, healthy. I like, you know, to give off the impression that I am healthy, that I am disciplined. Like, I think that someone that else who, you know. athletes we are here again for our next one Cheryl Rendon's weekly live show and today is our inspirational athlete interview we are having this amazing individual who started from having zero knowledge about the sport specifically in running swimming and also weightlifting let's welcome Mark Villanueva from San Francisco California welcome Mark uh, hey, Shangri-La. Hey, everyone. Um, that was a, quite an intro right there. <laughs> so much excitement. Well, of course, <laughs> we're having you. Well, so, you know, so I have met uh, Mark Villanueva and he came to me and he said, Coach, I have an LA marathon and it's about seven weeks from that time. And I want to get the best time ever that I can get. And at the time, he only got actually, he only finished one full marathon and his time was 430. So, uh, so when he asked me that, I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> uh, and then the next thing after that is that he also wanted to do the Alcatraz, but then he doesn't really know, okay, how's the right way to swim? And he wants Alcatraz right away. So, well, let's start from the uh, very beginning. Um, yeah. He shaved off at least one hour from four hours, 30 minutes, and it became three hours and 33 minutes with only seven weeks of training. <laughs> how did you do that <laughs> yeah that's it was it was crazy so specifically the marathon yeah yeah how did you do okay. the LA marathon I mean um so why that goal why did you want to be fast like, so yeah <laughs> I think, well I guess I should introduce myself so yeah I'm Mark I'm from San Francisco California um I am huge into running and swimming and triathlon sports and also weightlifting a lot so for the first marathon that I ever did, um, I got 430 and I had no training at all, really. Um, and then when I got Shangri-La to help me out and to coach me and everything, um, I think my main motivation was just to, so what got me to do it was my cousins were all, my cousin Gwen was doing it. You know, I had friends out, did marathons before. So, you know, I always looked at my friends and I was like, why can't I, you know, do if, if they can do this and I'm kind of like more hardworking than them in, in some sorts of ways. Um, why can't I, you know, do a marathon? So, yeah, I just pretty much this is what I wanted, you know, okay. uh, and, and I just stuck to it. And so I you felt that it was the right time and said, like, OK, well, I'll do the L.A. marathon. Like I got maybe eight weeks then. Right. <laughs> and because at the time. <laughs> You didn't even have a Garmin watch. You didn't have those. I did it, yeah. Watch. And I think, if I remember it correctly, you were even uh, using your phone. Oh, yeah. I was using time those phone. 1600s or one mile run that I was giving to exactly. you. Exactly. I was using my phone. <laughs> so he didn't have any Garmin watch or any, uh, you know, yeah. high tech. But so that didn't, didn't stop uh, you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't have anything. Like, I was using, like, I wasn't recording anything for my Ironman training. Um, I, I had my phone, but I barely like record. Sometimes I would just like, you know, open it up on Strava and then just like record. Um, I never had a Garmin. I didn't even know like, you know, what it was. I never, I, I thought all that equipment was just, you know, unnecessary. Like it was just too fancy for me. And I was just sure. not into all that stuff. I came from like zero, like nothing. I didn't know <laughs> anything about like well, Actually, uh, at the time when I was talking to him, he was only running about seven miles and very easy pace. There's really nothing much that he was doing because he was very busy with school at the time, taking tests or and or your work. Also, you just got your work. Yeah, so, definitely. So that was uh, uh, when you finished that L.A. marathon and you got 333 actually let me show you <laughs> how, <laughs> how 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 mark was back then uh let me see here i'm gonna share you my screen because he was so happy about it and this is mark oh yeah that was me uh, he, <laughs> i forgot about that picture oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so that was actually this was at the la marathon when you yeah. finished you were looking pretty I was, 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that was like, I was so, because that was the fastest marathon I ever did. And I trained so hard for it. You did. Um, at that time. You did. And, and I even like, you were, you were, you were even telling me, yes, yeah, stick at this pace. I think it was like um, 730. But then like in the beginning, I was, you know, just like, <laughs> I felt good. And I was going at a 710 pace, <laughs> going fast down, which brought my average down to like 805 pace. Good. But but I'm yeah, that was 2019 good. and definitely have been running since. So like, I'm definitely better than that. 2020 races closed down. Wish I could do a race then, but yeah. Uh, yeah. What did you feel when you got to the finish line, uh, Mark? Um, you didn't, did you expect that you're going to get three hours, 33 minutes then? Yeah, not really. Like, well, I, I was trying to aim for a lot faster. Okay. Um, just like every runner, they, you know, always set the bar of high. And the, <laughs> of course. <laughs> But, you know, I was still really happy with that time because that was just almost an hour. That was pretty much an hour faster than my year before. Yeah. Did mm -hmm. you feel that, hey, if I did that in seven weeks, maybe I could do another goal. And what is that goal? Did you feel something like that? Like, <laughs> oh, did you feel sure. invisible? <laughs> oh, for sure. I felt that training, that process that I learned from the running okay. you know, was, you know, you could transfer that to anything, whether it's swimming, bodybuilding. Um, it's all that mentality that, you know, I, I got from it. So, um, let me just welcome Gwen. Gwen is actually yeah. viewing this one. And hey, Gwen. Viewers. Ah, my hashtag God. live if you're viewing this one live and hashtag replay ah. if you're viewing this one replay. Welcome, Gwen. So, uh, so now when you, when you felt like you're invisible, so then the next thing is that, oh, I did that on running. And then you started thinking about swimming because you came to me. I, I want to do this race with only three weeks <laughs> till the race <Yeah>. again. <laughs> so how did you decide that you wanted to do swimming? Is it again, you know, you felt like, hey, this is the right time. I want another challenge. So I knew my ultimate like long-term goal was to do a full Ironman of sure. 140.6. Yep. Um, so, and I knew that swimming was my weakest mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to hone that and just focus on that completely. Um, and I knew that since, you know, from the training, from running, like I knew kind of, you know, the process of, of the, the work that you put in and everything for running. So I kind of just, you know, did the same thing with swimming. Uh, is it really like straightforward? Hey, I'll put my mentality on running, take it to swimming. Was it straightforward that you did well, like immediately? Also, I, just, I always put the time in. It was pretty straightforward. Gotcha. But I put a lot of time into my workouts. Like every single day I would do something like whether it was like the food that I ate, the vitamins that I took, um, the books that she even gave me that I read, the champions mind. So that was actually, really mind. Yeah. A really good book. Um, that by Afrimo. Uh, champions mind by Afrimo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a really like um game changing thing for me. That whole book was just inspiring. So I read that from front to back. I listened to it on Audible also. And several times i even wrote like notes in the margins and just like went along oh. with everything and that oh. really helped me just go and you know do all these workouts and just train every day um, i'm getting goosebumps because i could feel that you are in the zone oh, i was in the something zone. yeah this is <laughs> something that a, a lot of athletes who want to achieve that big goal that they really want it so badly and you were in it i mean i mean you read the book you were even putting notes in the margin. Yeah. And again, you even listen to the audible, the audio book uh -huh. on, on top of your food, on top of your training, on swimming, right? That's amazing. So yeah. this is actually Mark, because at the time also, let me see, that is Mark. So he yeah. started with 150. <laughs> so hey Mark, let's find That's out true. where you're at on the swimming because uh, your Alcatraz was actually three weeks. And then we find out his pace was 150 for 100 yards. Um, and then he had to also build a lot more confidence. So he was actually going in the, with the group at the time. He's putting in time. Like he, he was not just open doing open water swim on the weekend. He would put, you know, whenever he got the chance after work, he would do that. And he got it to 130 minutes per 100 yards in three weeks. Again, you accomplished this, Mark. And that was uh, 1.8 mile in Alcatraz and Alcatraz is no kid in terms of the current how did you feel when you achieved that one because you conquered another one also this one again another Alcatraz swim but this time during that time hey coach what I wanted to add here is that when you accomplish that first swim in Alcatraz you're like maybe I can add 
weightlifting, the bodybuilding. <laughs> so, okay, let's do it. So, yeah, so this is actually Mark. If you think about it, this one was 7 6, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's July 6. This is how he was in March. March, April, May, June, July. That's about four months. He had lost also quite a amount of body fat there. If you notice there. There you go. Starting to mm -hmm. lose it. That's when he actually, uh, at the time when he was also swimming. So what we have accomplished is that what we wanted to do is that both bodybuilding. So there's a, so to, to actually get lose, lose body fat percentage. And at the same time, um, the swimming portion, how was the experience on this part where you were actually doing a couple of things, which is, you know, lifting weights and then eating the right food. Tell me more. So yeah, this was the beginning. So this is when I uh, was training for the swim. It was my second Alcatraz swim, I think. Yeah, yes, my second yes, it Alcatraz was the second. Swim. And um, this time it wasn't just swimming. It was me wanting to incorporate like bodybuilding, lifting sure. weight. Yeah. I wanted to, I just wanted to be, you know, more lean, a more lean uh, muscled athlete, not like, gotcha. you know, super skinny or yeah. kind of like, you know, just uh, looked like an athlete in shape. Sure. So um, yeah, like I, I did, I, this was a lot of focusing on the diet as well um yeah, and sure. that was a complete like that was that was a new thing for me too um and and yeah like it was very tough too because you know you have to control the amount of calories you eat and the types of foods you eat and all that stuff and I was new at everything on calculating all that stuff and I remember I didn't even know how to cook at the time yeah <laughs> Exactly. That's what I was going to mention is because as far as I remember, you were telling me yeah. that you were getting your roasted chicken in uh, the grocery. <laughs> so you get everything like more of a prepared uh -huh. from the grocery from outside yeah, and like, never didn't know how to cook exactly. or didn't know how to prepare because well, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's easy, right? It's convenient. It's but, super easy and it's just consistent when you then, prep your own meals and everything. So that was yeah. quite a, that's quite a change that mm -hmm. you took on. Because yeah. you had to change your habits. Oh, yeah. And it's not necessarily just, you know, like looking at what to eat. It's more of actually incorporating that preparing of food yourself. So you know yeah. what you have and actually feel good about it. And then did you feel good or did you feel like you're actually eating the foods that you want? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, in the beginning, it was really tough because, you know, I wasn't used to like restricting the amount of like my body didn't know how much food it needed sure. and I, like in my mind I was like you know I want to eat this I want to eat that but like I really didn't need to eat all that food at the time yeah so it was really about control and it was mental again um because you know I'm, I'm changing I'm adapting into this new way of eating so of course you're going to feel you know different you're going to feel uncomfortable in the beginning sure yeah um, and yeah that was hard in the beginning to really um, shift that whole entire diet, but I got so used to it. And I found so many, like on my way of just cooking and, and preparing my meals and, you know, you know, learning a lot uh, as months go by on different, on different meals and things to eat. Um, I started enjoying and just made foods that I enjoy. Did you, can, do you say that before you actually started the eat, healthy eating habits that you um, were eating more than what you needed? Yeah, I was eating a lot more. Like I would a lot be, more. <laughs> what, would, yeah, I'm going to do what, a, what, what, what's your <laughs> usual day, uh, you know, like before? before? Yeah, so before I would just eat a Chipotle, you know, okay. I, wouldn't really, I would just get anything I want. I would just put guac on it, extra rice. Like I'm going to run tomorrow. I'm going to put more rice, I'm gonna put more rice. Okay. I could have sour cream. I could, you know, I'm running all the time. Just anything, right? Yeah, I was just eating anything because I thought that, like, I didn't really focus on my physique. I was more focusing on performance. Sure. Um, those are two things, too. Like, you could, you know, you don't have to have the best physique to be a good performer in, in mm -hmm. Because sports. you were fast. You yeah, didn't really I was fast. So it was more of your choice. Hey, besides mm -hmm. that, I want to, because that this was you. I mean, you were yes. fast already. Uh, and you didn't need to have like a very right. good physique. Yeah. And you decided it was your choice. Hey, I wanted I wanted to challenge more. And then so you actually, you know, within seven weeks, when you committed to it, you uh, you also had eleven point three pounds fat loss. Yeah. <laughs> on top of it, and you were weightlifting as well. And we needed to make sure that we incorporate that weightlifting in a way that's not going to affect your swimming. So. Any other practices or learnings that you actually incorporate during that time? 
in terms of the swimming or the yeah both bodybuilding? swimming and bodybuilding okay yes i so really i think to look you know a certain physique it's all diet it's really all diet Ooh. um i mean you know working out and all that stuff helps but getting the body fat percentage down to show your muscle is really important. And that really is all, you know, diet and calorie restriction, you know, eating less processed foods and, and being very strict on my food choices uh, and um, sticking to a calorie deficit that you, you planned out for me also, because I didn't know about like yeah. um, how much proteins I'm supposed my body's supposed to take. I didn't know like little things like that. Yeah. Um, we have to, know, uh, yeah we have to go through the macros how much the, the protein the balance between protein uh -huh. fat and carbs on top of you weight lifting and uh -huh. at the same time you swimming and also because you were your body was adapting it was your first time to actually go through that yeah endurance and the weight lifting <laughs> exactly. so, and then we have to adjust uh so yeah uh, uh -huh. That was very good, actually, experience in terms of, and also the other portion that um, we wanted to make sure is that that you wouldn't feel guilty when you like lost track, because <laughs> there was a time when <laughs> there, there, yeah. I remember when there was a Father's Day, and then you're like, Coach, I remember that day. Yeah, <laughs> Coach, I messed up. You're like, you are beating yourself up. I messed up. I couldn't take it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, what did you learn now that you know more now? You know, like. Did you need to be feeling guilty the way you were then because uh, you Father's well, Day? I think because yeah. I was just so strict on everything, you know, yes. I was very particular about that. So maybe it was a good thing that I was strict on myself like that. But, okay. you know, now that, you know, I'm older, like two years older than that, um, I could definitely splurge and I know how to control. I know how to like, you know, if I'm going to eat a lot this day, then I could just, you know, balance it out throughout the, you know, throughout the week and eat a little bit less. Gotcha. Uh, so you're more balanced throughout the week. I'm more, I look at like, you know, weekly, like as long as I don't, you know, go overboard weekly, that's fine. Like right. in terms of calories. Yeah. Um, I don't look at the individual day. Yeah. Um, and it if is, I do splurge, that's fine. Like, you know, it's, you know, I'm going to go to parties. And I'm gonna, uh, that was a family party that I went to. So um, I right. definitely wanted to hang out with my family and, you know, spend a good time, eat good food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, and one of the things that actually, I thought that cooking would be hard. I should have done this before I'm even saving money. <laughs> oh yeah. I was, I was, I, I had no money back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You weren't even saving money, uh, you know, just because you were preparing. Uh, but a lot, what you did was that more of being more knowledgeable of what your body needs to perform. Because at the time, you know, you didn't really need that much food. Also, yeah. and you were not, you know, you were eating, you know, a lot more of the processed food and you removed that one. And this, oh my gosh, <laughs> so this was just actually uh, about last year, about yeah. last year. So this was the start uh, yeah. when we started, you know, when he was training for the LA marathon, he was about this LA uh, 19%. And then Shane, I've been keeping my diet intact since you introduced me to all that clean eating. Look at where my body fat in comparison from last I couldn't have started this all without you. Tell me more <laughs> about this, Mark. Okay, this was, yeah, this was. 8% okay, so, body fat. That's well, amazing. quarantine happened and then I had all this time. Uh -huh. um, and I think it was in my mind that I really wanted this mentally. Okay. So, you know, I would, you know, look at my diet. I would look at my workouts and I would see what I'm doing. And I would kind of do trial and error with a lot of things. Gotcha. Yeah. So I had all this time to to focus on bodybuilding and, and at the same time, I was running a lot. Sure. <laughs> um, it's a combination. So, so yeah, like I was also like, even everyone I followed on Instagram, like it would be like a bodybuilder influencer or, you know, sure. a diet nutritionist. Um, I would, I would follow a lot of, you know, I would just try to fill my whole and read, you know, champion's mind like every year. Again. Wow. Super, yeah, that was a great book. Um, yes. So everything that I like from my feed on Facebook and, and, and Instagram to the book I read to, um, you know, just random YouTube videos I would watch on, sure. on nutrition and, and diet and fitness. Um, I would get the chance. Like I had all this time to do that. So, you know, gotcha. I really wanted it in the, you know, mentally, I really wanted this. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to focus on it and hone it down. And that's kind of what I did in 2020. Yeah. What, are, um, you know, 
when you were doing those things, did you ever like encounter any challenges like all throughout this with, you know, starting from zero, not knowing anything, right? Not, not knowing what to do, but you want this goal. Uh, okay, so challenges. It gets tough. Like, for example, with the losing the body fat, that was, yes. the challenge there is, you know, you got to tell your mind it's okay to not be hungry. You know, it's, it's okay to not eat sometimes because you don't need to eat, but your, your mind doesn't know that. <laughs> so little things like that um so in terms of weight loss like it's really being able to control your diet um finding low calorie foods and enjoying that and um being like if you're going out with friends be mindful about what you're eating um and remember your goal when you're going out with friends and identifying your the triggers that could you know okay. make you um do the bad things in terms of yeah. keeping your diet good yeah um so if, if there's a party that you don't need to go to, but you know you're going to mess up your diet, then, um, you know, you don't go to that party. Uh, but if you, want, if you want the goal that bad, then, you know, you'll, you'll hang out with more fitness people. You'll, you know. Gotcha. You'll, Just change you know, of lifestyle then. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think if you really want to, um, you know, control it in terms of like the weight loss, if you really want to control your diet, just identify the triggers that make you eat a certain way. Um, gotcha. don't put it don't put it into the house you know <laughs> not not have yeah the not things have, that you don't want to mess yeah. up your goals yeah, don't have it in the house <laughs> oh yeah like just yeah like also like quantifying everything like i would quantify all the calories and everything i would weigh everything i would it was it was a lot of tracking sure uh, getting a lot of that data and looking at it got it got it when you change the way you eat is there any change in your energy or is it, did you gain more energy because you, there's no more crash, you know, when you go yeah. eat high sugar and then you crash and it's up again. Right. Uh, so tell me more about the energy effect. Like how do you feel? Do you feel stronger? Yeah. I used to eat a lot of like sweets and stuff like when I wanted to. Um, and I would have that crash all the time and I would have those, you know, you know, like I get all moody. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's definitely more consistent since I eat pretty much like the same thing every day. I change it up okay. every now and then, but I generally eat the same thing every day. Okay. Um, uh, on weekends, I still, I, I, I eat a variation of things. I kind of just, you know, enjoy the weekends. I eat whatever. Okay. Um, but, is that for ease in preparation? Is that what it is? Or you just got used to it? It's just the way your personality is. I got used to it. Is. Yeah, gotcha. I pretty much got used to it. Got it, so. got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, you know, in Feisty Facts Coaching, we, 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 did, we did go through in training, nutrition, body maintenance or injury prevention, mental fitness, and also race strategy training, right? Is there anything else that you learned during the process at the time? Uh, let's see. I learned, so I think the biggest thing I learned was the discipline. Discipline. Um, I think... Um, I also learned knowing why, like, if you really want to achieve something, you have to know your reason why. Mm -hmm. So gets, you have why to. Why is that? Because it gets harder. Because you really got to get through it. You see your goal at the end. Like, if you want a certain time, if you you want to look a certain way, um, if you want to prep for a certain race, yes. Um, and if you want it that bad, like, just understand like why you want to achieve it. Um, at first for me, it was, I was really competitive. I wanted to, you know, <laughs> beat my friends times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like just find your why. Um, and the, the training will just follow. You'll want to follow all this training. You'll want to do what's your, what's your burning desire to why you really want to, you know, get to where you want to be. And then, and then the discipline, you'll get that from understanding that. So I want to ask you, uh, is that something that you always ask yourself? So like, for example, tomorrow you wake up, right? You're aiming for a goal. You remind yourself your why, like when you go out for a workout. Is that how you do it? Oh, yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Just, every, you know, know your goal. Understand every, your why. So every single yeah. workout, you actually, hey, why? Even though yeah, like, for, for example, I like, it sounds stupid, but I remember I wanted to look last year when you saw that picture, I wanted to look good for summer. I, I was okay like, yes i remember <laughs> that uh, so, <laughs> your goal was the summer it's coming just, up so yeah so i you know the summer was coming up um you know i was gonna work out a lot outside too you know there's no gyms and um i wanted to take some good pictures outside too gotcha. so 
yeah, like it was a month of prep and I wanted to, you know, prep to look good. So I followed a lot of what bodybuilders did and ate. Yeah. Um, I followed their, you know, I, I looked online on YouTube and Googled a lot of the stuff that they did. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that was my, my why to, to prep to Got look it. that certain way. Well, um, what, what I'm hearing is actually, you yeah. have not even gotten to where you wanted to be yet, but you are already doing the actions that yeah. those people who you're following. So you're actually doing it already before you even get to the result. That's uh -huh. amazing. I think, yeah. And, and again, it's kind of like th that book champions mind. If you could change your mind first, then change your mind you first. Follow. If you yeah. change your, you know, if you change your mentality first, um, if you adopt all the habits that everyone's doing, it's only a matter of time that you're going to change. You're going to get awesome. faster. You're going to look different. Um, as long as you stick to those habits, you stick to the discipline. Um, then Gwen actually said, I remember Mark, he had to let me hide all the good food at home <laughs> and he stayed over. So you actually asked for support from family, hide the good food that I'm coming there. Is I that right? Did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember that. So for me, like, for example, for me, a trigger for me is when I see the food, it's sometimes game over. Like it, oh so like, okay got it yeah, so that's a trigger like if you could eliminate the triggers if you could not put it into the Before. house like even if i just put it in the cabinet sure. like i won't look at it but mm -hmm. if i glance at it i'll think about it uh. <laughs> so that was like um that was me in the beginning i'm a more able to control like the foods that i eat now but in the beginning i remember sweets was hard like oreos like i if i saw the oreo like the package and not eat it i would be thinking about it the rest of the day you're gonna be more obsessed about it than what yeah, you think so, about it okay. so yeah again just identifying the triggers that make you want to you're, eat. you are actually giving a lot of things here so you talk mm -hmm. about removing the trigger knowing your yeah. why and uh -huh. actually doing the things that the person who you want to be already starting yeah. with the mindset uh-huh so just you can actually apply in the action exactly. yeah, it, yeah. See, find an influencer find someone that you really look up to and you want to be like and then you know see what their diet is, see what their habits are, see what yeah. their workouts are. And then this is so good at it. Because once you it's and then once you, you know, get those habits from them, it's only a matter of time. It may be six months, maybe a year it could be sooner, too. Um, but you will change yeah. <laughs> if, throughout time. You're going to find, you know, ways. Be careful what you ask for, because it's going to come exactly. whether you like it or not. It will come be careful what you ask for, because it'll come. Um, but, you know, know that you'll get it but you'll be sacrificing a lot of other things. So that's why they, you say, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned also discipline. And I wanted to ask you, how about patience? Because I remember when I was, when we were uh, doing the LA Marathon, you know, coach, coach, what's my expected time? <laughs> Chill, focus on that workout right now because we have time, we'll get there. You know, mm -hmm. patience, right? And also there are times like, you know, I was telling you, yeah, you know, weigh yourself, but that's not black and white. You know, that's more or less a good information. We're not going to judge it by your weight for the day, yeah. right? There's a lot of factors. So I know you have to be patient. Is that, is that right? Do you think that you are very patient on all this when you're trying to achieve goals? I, I think, yeah, I, I think I'm really patient. Um, I, what really helped me too was, was just tracking the data to see a little yeah. bit remember like when running like the very first thing that i tracked was my running and you told me to sure. get my business garment i'm like Shangri-La, that's kind of expensive for me but i bought it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um so yeah like i would see how i progressed almost like every week and that you know seeing even the little progression um Motivated, when, yeah. and then after months would go by i would see the progression from like a year back and it would be like whoa that's insane um, my, my pace got a lot faster. Yes. So I think tracking the data and seeing, um, seeing just like the little things that motivate you will give you patience. Yes. Um, and that's the same thing I did with bodybuilding. Like, remember you told me to always take a picture of yourself. Yes. Um, on the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. With the same conditions, with the same lighting, with the same, you know, don't eat in the morning. <laughs> um, you know, with the same posture and everything, don't lie to yourself. Don't suck at it. Like you just got to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Just yeah. let it be. <laughs> so if you track that data, um, if you track that data and look back on it throughout the days, the months, the years, and you see that little progress, and you you'll be like, whoa. Um, then you'll have patience. Like 
because you know in the future you'll you're, you're only going to go up if you do you know if you have that discipline and you form those habits and you keep at it so, so now it, it sounds like also that you have instilled this mindset tools that you've been using to crush your goals to get your goals right um do you believe that this is more of a change of your lifestyle this is your lifestyle now you see oh, yourself like a strong sure. runner strong swimmer you're not you're never gonna change you think you know like later when you have your family you think it's gonna change i'm just curious no i think that about is a lifestyle that i definitely want to keep like i don't see myself ever going back like i don't like those habits that i was you know, I wasn't before, I like to feel, you know, healthy, I like, you know, to give off the impression that I am healthy, that I am disciplined, like, I think that someone that Ills. who, you know, is generally fit and looks fit, um, um, it shows a lot of discipline that, yeah. um, that and the character of the person um, mm -hmm. in the workouts and everything, um, and not just like in That's working good. out, but like, um, this is like fundamental stuff. Like if you could be disciplined in, in your workouts and being fit, then you could be disciplined in really anything, whether it's your, your work or, you know, um, your studies or whatever. So I think that this is a lifestyle that I changed the past two years. I, I, I even realized it until like now. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a lifestyle that I changed and I don't see myself going back to um, something that was never, consistent and where I was always you know just not structured gotcha so, so I definitely wow. I definitely like this lifestyle better well I, I think that's amazing that you know what you've learned from the training on the running and then the swimming and the bodybuilding and being actually independent and knowing you know how to get to your goals mm -hmm. and being able to apply what you've learned in other areas you mentioned work also yeah oh yeah that's like great. yeah for sure like I remember I was even trying to like get out get out of some credit card debt and this discipline right here helped me <laughs> there you go because <laughs> you to you know keep a consistent mentality gotcha. um nice so, like again like it's really starts with the mentality of who you want to be it really yeah. starts with the mind and yeah, it exactly. sounds you know cliche whatever <laughs> yeah but it is what it is it's i mean it's, it. it's what you how you got your mm -hmm. la time mm -hmm. and i know there's going to be more so before we end this uh this interview i wanted to ask you if there are other athletes you know who want to be faster stronger athlete it could be la marathon it could be another full marathon yeah. and they want to qualify for boston or you know lose some some fat doesn't have to be like how you did it right but actually have this goal what are the top three things that you'd advise uh that person considering that let's say they don't even know how to get there like just like you just remember how you were zero uh, you had no idea you're even capable of doing uh -huh. or achieving those things what are the yeah. top three things that you'd advise that person okay so for sure you have to write down the goal that you want like if you don't write down the goal, goal if you don't structure if you don't have a date in mind mm -hmm. and you're just like you know randomly doing things like then it's not going to happen if you are prepping for something like if you are prepping for a certain time um then you'll then you'll definitely you know be more you'll you'll achieve it better so write things write down goal. write okay. write the goal down and, and that deadline and the deadline okay so knowing your goal and um and then the second thing is um the people that influence you so mm. who do you hang out with who do you talk with the most do they influence you to eat more do they influence you to run faster um are they kind of lazy are they giving you thoughts of you know wanting to quit or yeah, giving, sure. are they like hope like giving you hopeless thoughts so yeah. that's important and like for me again like you know um following a lot of people that bodybuilders on on instagram or, or youtube like subscribing to them and seeing their ways of eating and their patterns um and just with my friends too like i always hang out with my triathlon friends gotcha. um, so so yeah i had their mentality i wasn't having you know the mentality of someone who was watching tv all day or mm -hmm. um, playing video all right. games all day um so so yeah write down your goal um knowing who your influences are and then a third one um so yeah i'd say um read the champion's mind there you go <laughs> yeah, that's a really good book that um, i wish i could pull yeah, it right now she, but, yeah she recommended to me um and and yeah like i'd say interactively read that book and it really will <laughs> fundamentally change 
Yeah. Good thinking. <laughs> Champions Mind by Jim Afrimo. This is a requirement for all my one-on-one -on -one athletes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, if you have read it, read it again. Because I had read and listened to it at least 20 times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So good uh -huh. stuff. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Mark, for your time. You. And uh, I, I know that a lot of our athletes are actually so excited to apply what you have just told uh -huh. them. And I've been taking down notes as well. So till uh -huh. next time, Mark, I will see you again. Bye. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, this helped a lot. Of course, yes, uh, yes, yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Till next time. Bye. All right. Bye.